The following is a production of UNO Television for KYNE-TV. Consider this with Carol Schrader, a news and information program recorded on the campus of the University of Nebraska at Omaha. From the Fireside Lounge in the Milo Bale Student Center, here is your host, Carol Schrader. Hello and welcome to UNO. Consider this, UFOs are real. Well, if you believe that, or at least think they're very possible, you're in the growing number of people in this country. Statistics show from the, the surveys that are taken that, I don't know if it's Star Trek or X-Files, but most of you are at least willing to believe it's a possibility. Well, my guests here think it's more than a possibility. With me today, and I'm pleased to have them, are John Foster. He's a retired engineer and a lifelong UFO contactee. I'll think about that for a minute while I introduce Dr. Jack Kasher. He is a professor of physics at UNO, and um, he's a believer from a scientific sense, in fact, and we'll, we'll go into that a, a little bit throughout the show. I think I've never met a contactee. Oh, yeah. Never, you know, I've read about it, uh, I've heard uh, media. Um, before we get into detail, there are by your count, by your personal knowledge and anecdotes, there are more than just you around. There are uh, in this, you know. <coughs> yes, right in uh, right in eastern Nebraska, there are, there are what I would say are many people that have had. Well, you're a very hot topic. People like you right now. We are. A and and <laughs> people like uh, Jack, who are are analyzing video, uh, NASA video regarding one thing or another. That's Most right. recently, Mars, although that's not. Uh, your particular bag. Yeah, that's another issue, but yeah, that's right. We're getting more and more videotapes so we can analyze them scientifically, and that, that part of it is really starting to grow. The reason, and we'll go over this later, that I, they bring this up is that there is a UFO uh, Contact and You open forum a week from Saturday, the 25th, in Lincoln. And uh, uh, John is, uh, I'm getting John and Jack mixed up, so forgive me. John is uh, helping organize, organize this. Yeah. So That's we thought we'd right. give you a little food for thought, and maybe uh, this group meets once in a while and opens things up for, for the public to come and listen, and if nothing else, just enjoy. If you don't believe it, it's interesting fiction. Um, your personal contact, though, I mean, are we talking about a while back, or is this some recent revelation? Well, uh, it, it's, it's kind of a strange story. Can, can I have a little time to explain well, how it happened well, here? Well, I think, okay. I think we could do that <coughs> first, and then we're going to get to Jack, okay. so don't feel left out. I won't. All right. Uh, I was an uh, engineer most of my life in aerospace. I uh, started in the nuclear field, and um, then I was a, a builder, home builder, and uh, contractor for about 10 years. Uh, went back into engineering. About 1981, I, uh, my son-in-law and I said a prayer that we might be able to see a UFO. We were you both wanted in, to see. Yeah, we were both interested. And uh, about three minutes later, one flew right over our heads. And uh, of course, that made me wonder. Uh, uh, we were actually weren't shocked. I don't know why, but it made me wonder about how God was connected to UFOs. Well, uh, <clears throat> I didn't see another one for a long time, and um, then in 1986, uh, all of a sudden, I began to remember experiences that had occurred in my past, and uh, it was just a flood of recollection. The memories came back so fast, I was um, devastated, and um, <clears throat> the first witness. Uh, that I called remembered, which told me that I was not psychotic or that I was having um, erroneous memories and that sort of thing. Anyway, anyway over a period of time, there have been uh, a few people that have come that remember the same experiences I do and uh, that were have with verified you it. or s similar yes, parallel. Kind that were with me. Uh, one unusual thing about my experiences is that I was never alone during the experiences, except for a few short periods. And, uh, for instance, uh, I have a list of about 150 people I knew well that were with me during different times. And as an engineer, this just devastated me because I didn't remember. <laughs> but uh, we were, I was told during my last experience, which uh, coincidentally occurred in August of 1986, when we had a parting of the ways, uh, Who had parting of the ways? Uh, you and the so-called ETs and I. Uh, I, be I began to get angry during the early 1980s when they showed up, and um, 
they gave me an option to terminate the experiences, and they said my decision would be final. Wait a minute, angry? What? Yes. That well, these are clandestine experiences that occur uh, in real time, in real space, but they program you or hypnotize you some way so that you don't remember. And I can remember forgetting many experiences as the ending. So <clears throat> I was absolutely uh, intrigued with what was going on, and uh, you can imagine how it upset my life. Uh, so I began to dig into it and try to understand what had happened. And uh, as a result, uh, an enormous, complex, lengthy story came out when I put all of the bits and pieces of memory together and could, could come up with a uh, purpose, um, several purposes and that sort of thing. They didn't want you to remember? It, it uh, actually, during the last experience, they told me, uh, that was one of my objections, was that I couldn't remember during the experience, or after the experiences, and uh, they said if I remembered, it would negate the purpose of the experiences. Which would mean they're experimental or um, explorational on well, their part? Well, uh, actually, they said they had been around since prehistory. Uh, they were active during the ancient Egyptian empire, during biblical times and more modern times. And they said they, weren't, they were responsible to a hierarchy and were not allowed to interfere with the affairs of humankind except at certain times in history when things were going awry or when things were dangerous. This sounds like Gene Roddenberry, <coughs> first contact or, or, or something. Well, my story is somewhat unusual because the beings that I ran into are not the typical little... Uh, big-eyed uh, grays. Oh, heavy yeah, with the yeah. There are different, uh, they're what I call the lizard-like uh, beings, and we do, uh, I don't know if you have pictures of them, but well, I have gonna, done we're gonna some pictures. We're going to show that some uh, stuff in a second, but did okay. you go into space? Uh, as far as I know, only once did I travel, and I don't remember, I remember leaving, I don't, and I remember returning, but I don't remember, I remember the stars going by the window, and that's the last thing I remember. Well, you've documented some of these in your own personal way through, <coughs> through drawings and, drawings and some sculptures. And um, some so writings, yeah. We'll uh, take a look at some of these and, 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 okay. and get a feel for them. Um, should be coming up soon. There we are. Okay, that was actually the experience uh, that the first witness I called remembered. So uh, he remembered this particular scene. And this was where? Uh, that was at Shadron State Park in Nebraska uh, about 1950s. Uh, some of these others, uh, other drawings are uh, my view of uh, what actually happened. And so far I have about 140 drawings that I've done and I could do many, many more. I'm doing a manuscript and I'm doing the uh, drawings for illustrations for the and manuscript. And this is a spaceship you saw? Yes, uh -huh. uh, the little booth there was uh, quite strange and uh, it actually somehow, and remember I'm an engineer so I, I'm, I'm not dreaming this up, somehow that booth came down from out of the saucer, sat on the ground and then we would eventually, we would hear a voice that would communicate with us and we would eventually sit inside. And a lot of it had to do with something to do with the American Indians. Hmm. This one, particular one is very interesting. The light shone down and um, the other boys in the swimming pool could see my bones through my flesh. I looked very weird. They wanted me to see what they were seeing so another boy took my place and the light came down on him and I could see his bones through his flesh. So you were young? I was about seven years old there, yes. Huh? My goodness. Uh, this was uh, <coughs> sometimes the craft sometimes uh, uh, protected me. Uh, the adults in, at this uh, campground were giving me trouble because they thought I was responsible for the craft to show up. And the craft would, a small craft came in and they would swoop down over their heads and try to uh, 